Well, good afternoon, everyone. What a great day to kick off the great New York State Fair. And let me tell you, it's also a pretty great day to be the Commissioner of New York Agriculture. I'll tell you that, too. I was just here yesterday, and we unveiled the butter sculpture up in the dairy building. And honestly, you could feel the excitement in the air. Folks are excited to be back here. Folks are excited to be part of this great fair. And I got to tell you, I'm excited to be back here and excited about another great New York State Fair. It's, uh, and it's wonderful to have so many of my colleagues here from the cabinet. Uh, we've got some legislative leaders here. You'll get to meet them. Uh, local people, proud New Yorkers all. So start to a great fair. There's a long list of things that make this fair actually the best in the country. And one of those, of course, is something that's near and dear to my heart, and that's the fair's continued focus on agriculture. Our fair truly has something for everyone with amazing entertainment, rides, food. It's all about the food. <laughs> and the very best of New York agriculture is represented right here every day. And our governor has been a friend of agriculture. She's committed to the industry. She has been spending a tremendous amount of time visiting farms all across our state. Recently, we were on Long Island in July. Just a few weeks ago, we were up in the North Country together listening to our farmers talk firsthand about the future of agriculture in New York State. It's been a top priority of hers, her first year in office. Congratulations on that, by the way. First year in office. But really long before that, as she toured the state as our lieutenant governor, uh, you've often heard me joke that she's been to as many farms as I have been, but that's no joke. That's not a joke. I've had the pleasure of joining our governor as she highlighted our Nourish New York program, supported our dairy farms through our New York State Grown and Certified program, and helped to promote our county fairs. She means it. So it's a great honor for me to stand here today and say, let me introduce someone to you, someone who has amazing passion and amazing energy, our governor, Kathy Hochul. Time. Thank you. Well, Commissioner, I feel the same about you. Uh, you have been a tireless leader, a champion for an industry that people don't always associate with New York. If you don't live in New York, you think of Manhattan. And we know there's so, so much more. And uh, the way you celebrate and honor our farmers and uh, the challenges they face and how we try to work through them together, I, I applaud you. Uh, for being such an important part of our administration. Let's give another round of applause to Commissioner Ball. Um, we've got a, I also want to recognize uh, Jennifer Sarangelo, the national president and CEO of the 4-H Council and all the 4-Hers who are here today. Anybody from 4-H here today? Let's give a shout out. Yeah. We'll hear a little bit more about that, but 4-H, uh, and I'm a 4-H member, once a 4-H member, always a 4-H member, uh, stands for four values of heart and head and hands and health, and I've always uh, loved the, the, the pledge to what that all means in our lives, so I want to thank her for journeying here. Uh, she's not from here originally, but she spent time at Syracuse University, so you're one of us. Uh, so there you go. Uh, uh, many, many state leaders, I want to thank you. I know you're recognized, but also our Mayor Ben Walsh is here. I want to thank the Mayor for joining us. Good to see you, Mayor. And our County Executive, Ryan McMahon. And I have so many cabinet members here. Why don't we just have our next meeting right now? <laughs> By the way, who's running the state? <laughs> uh, you are all just uh, in my heart. I'm so proud of every one of you. You all have taken on the challenge of governing during some challenging times, and it is a challenge, but also with, with the heart and your heads and your hands and the conviction of what public service really means. So uh, let's give a huge round of applause to every member of my cabinet. They're all right over here. Thank you. And 
to our local officials. Again, I mentioned our state partners, John Mannion, who's here, uh, Bill Magnarelli, assembly member, Rachel May has joined us, Pamela Hunter, uh, Al Sturpey, and I, I thank them, and I look forward to a really robust legislative session uh, starting in January, and I, and I do appreciate all you do uh, during session, but certainly the time you spend in your districts, which is really the most important time, and I thank you for that. Uh, so uh, here we are, making the fair happen again. Uh, also, there are members of the Cornell University Corn uh, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Uh, the dean here, uh, we actually, where's the dean? Ben, ben Howen, dean, great to see you again. Uh, Jean Halton, Christopher Watkins, and also uh, Julie Suarez, I want to thank them for here. So, this is what we wait all year for, isn't it? The fair is back, and I'm so excited to be here. Uh, after two years, uh, shut down in 2020. Last year I was here, so I think it was one of the most, the first probably real official act I did. I was governor as of a year ago today, and I was here just a couple days later, and uh, Wow, what a difference a year makes. <laughs> uh, and so the fact that we're here is just extraordinary. You know, that the comeback story of New York is replicated in how this fair has come back as well. And I'm really, really proud of that. And, uh, and we want to welcome everyone to what is a 13-day extravaganza. There was a little issues about the timing before, but we're here focused on making sure this is strong. We also support our other fairs throughout the state. We want to have them strong and healthy. So uh, thank you, Commissioner Ball, for making that happen as well. And to uh, Sean Hennessy. Where's Sean? Sean. Sean. Uh, uh, the, the man of the hour, the man of the hour, uh, who stepped up and just has been leading with, again, the same commitment to public service that we all believe in. And, uh, you've been doing an incredible job. I'm getting a lot of reports on you because I'm asking every day, how's he doing? How's he doing? How's he doing? Uh, and it's been great. So, so we're here to welcome what will be over a million visitors, uh, even more. The weather looks spectacular. People come from all over the country. And we get a chance to showcase our state story and, and our celebrated agriculture and the dairy products and the livestock and everything else that we just talk about. And uh, you already covered the amazing food and the entertainment. Uh, there's nothing like this. There's nothing like this. And any other state, bring it on. You, did, you, 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 you can't touch New York State Fair. So, so I am really proud to be the governor. And uh, I'm going to be here very shortly. I'm just making sure. They still have that fried pumpkin pie here. Can we find it? You got some? OK, because that was why I came, actually. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the maple cotton candy, and you know, you know, how, you know, how I cherish this industry. I, I eat everything maple, and uh, there's a little discussion. I have to, to deal with a little controversy here. I got asked during a debate what kind of bagels I like. Um, I, okay, I said, you know, I like sweetness. I like you know everything sweet. So I have a uh, cinnamon raisin bagel and I'd have cream cheese with maple in it. And, and that was like blasphemy in New York City. <laughs> so, so, like, what are you talking about? Who are you? And you're, that person's really our governor, really? <laughs> uh, it almost disqualified me, it seems. But I said, I know this maple industry. They have maple beer. They have maple wine. They have cotton. There's not a single food that we don't have maple syrup in in upstate. And I'm going to keep supporting my maple syrup industry, my maple industry. So. That is, that is my loyalty to my products here in the state of New York. So uh, we're really excited to be here. This fair was also, you know, I've always gone to fairs. Uh, I went to Syracuse here, so I came as a student. But also, uh, I spent days at the Erie County Fair. And I have to talk about this a little bit, because uh, that's why we're talking about 4-H today. When you think about leadership skills and how you learn them, I learned a lot about what I need to do as a young 4-H. I was 10 years old. And all of us had to do something. We're actually learning how to sew aprons and fun things like that. It's a long time ago. But also, we had to do something. You had to demonstrate something at the fair. So this is my first public speaking. I was 10 years old, very intimidated, had an audience. This looks a little bigger. Uh, I think it's just my mom, maybe, out there. <laughs> but I was still nervous. And so I had to demonstrate how to make some healthy food. And this is crazy. But to this day, I had to make a poster. I still remember the ingredients for banana orange frosted. I was ahead of my time with smoothies. <laughs> half a banana, half a cup of orange juice, half a cup of uh, sherbet and uh, milk, and you blend it all together. And it's a, 
very nutritious drink. I said, that's exactly what I said. And I, and I won the award for just getting up and talking about making it. So ever since then, you know, it's been a path toward public speaking, uh, you know, building confidence building confidence, and those are the skills that a lot of young people don't have if they're not in a program like that. So that's why I wanted to give a special shout out to the influence that 4-H, and I brag about this all over the state, especially when I go to farms. I mean, this really made a difference in my life, and I, and I cherish uh, the work that you're still doing. So you know I care about this fair. We're going to keep investing it. The investments uh, up until this year have been extraordinary, but I'm always one to raise the bar. Uh, is there anything else we need to be doing? And that's exactly why we put almost $35 million in our recently passed budget to make sure we can continue, continue improving the fairgrounds. So let's make it even better. Let's make it even better. Let's, let's show you some of our ideas. Okay, you can't be a really good fair without a first-rate goat pavilion. I just want to put that out there. Okay, so, so this time next year, uh, we're going to have 2,500 square feet of new so show space, but also powered by solar energy. How much fun is that going to be? So that's going to be great. A goat pavilion. Uh, a new concessions building, a permanent home for New Yorkers to get all their favorite treats. I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, that's going to be nice. Improvements to Restaurant Row Streetscape, a new lighting and landscaping and seating and vendor spaces. Uh, that might take a little longer, uh, maybe not next summer like the other ones, but uh, this is how we're going to improve our agriculture center. And you have to have a brand new wool center, 2,500 square feet, a new sheep barn, three new horse barns, show ring, and a seating area. So uh, these are the investments we're going to make. You'll see a difference next summer. And as we work to green the fair, green the fair, get this, uh, uh, we have a new state-of-the-art greenhouse, and uh, it's going to be an education center, we're going to have community resources, and this will help us focus on the latest high-tech initiatives to make sure that our industry also is green, as, as it already is. Uh, new York is growing. New York is growing. Our fair is growing. Uh, our confidence in our state continues to grow, and we're going to continue educating and entertaining all at the same time. So I'm really proud of what we do here. Uh, and I just want to say, as I said before, we are back. This is an extraordinary um, part of our identity as a state. I want everybody to talk about it in other parts of our state, and we're going to continue focusing on that. And we have some new exhibits this year that I want to talk about briefly, the New York State Energy and Environmental Experience, which is highlighting how we use renewable energy and enhancing our lives and helping the environment from wind turbines and electric vehicles to smart homes. Let's let people see what the future looks like. That's why you come to fairs. Uh, it's, I think there's a great opportunity here for just to be, educate people as what the great possibilities are. The skilled trades and manufacturing exhibit, I've been there. Let's talk about all the jobs for building and people using their hands and their minds and just uh, you're learning the skills that are going to help build back our state because we've got some very exciting projects uh, in upstate in particular. And of course, the butter sculpture. And, <laughs> And I saw the pictures. I haven't seen in person yet. I have to go witness this extravaganza. But this is 50th anniversary of the passage of Title IX. We talk about <laughs> we talk about laws that have radically changed people's lives, the lives of young women who have an opportunity to receive an education on a scholarship because they have a passion for a sport as well. And before 50 years ago. I'll admit that's when I was growing up, there was not a lot of interest in women's sports. Uh, I basically didn't have any. I just worked at a pizzeria after school. There was not opportunities. And so there's that loss of all the talents and skills you build be by being part of a team and pushing yourself to the limits and dealing with wins and losses. And all those skills are taught through sportsmanship. And that was not there up until 50 years ago. So we celebrate that this year. And what better way to celebrate something important than to make a butter sculpture out of it, OK? <laughs> so, so I'm real excited. Uh, I'd like to call up Jennifer right now and have her say a few words. But again, uh, thank you for coming here. Thank you for being part of all of us who are ambassadors to this amazing place. And we showcase all that is good about New York right here at the Great Fair here in Syracuse. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. 
So I'm so happy to be back here in Syracuse. As the governor said, I'm a, a graduate of Syracuse University. This is my third time at the New York State Fair, and I agree, it's got to be the best fair in the country. I can't wait to go to the Dairy Building. It's my favorite. I'm twice a resident, twice a resident of New York, so I'm so happy to be here. I want to join the governor in just recognizing the leadership of Cornell University and Cornell Cooperative Extension for the 4-H program. They lead here. Uh, Dean um, Holton, Vice President of Government Relations, Joel Molina, and Extension Director, Chris Watkins. So these are some of the leaders that make 4-H possible here in New York. For, for the 120-year history of 4-H, um, Cornell Cooperative Extension has been serving the youngest citizens of New York through the 4-H program in every single county in New York, including the five boroughs, so 62 when you put it all together. Today, under the leadership of Dr. Andy Turner, who's the state 4-H program leader here in New York at Cornell, 4-H um, really leads the, the nation in um, serving, creating opportunity for all young people through their focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion in the 4-H program in New York. So I just want to thank them so much for inviting us here to honor Governor Hochul and um, for what they do for the young people in New York. The 4-H Distinguished Alumni Medallion is the highest honor National 4-H Council bestows on an alumni for significant career achievements and for their embodiment of the values of the 4-H pledge. So Governor Hochul and I did not coordinate, but you heard her talk about the 4-H pledge. The 4-Hs are in that pledge. I pledge my head to clearer thinking my heart to greater loyalty, she said this at every club meeting, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. And so Governor Hochul has um, certainly embodied that, her head with the smarts she brings to her job, her hardworking nature, making the tough decisions it takes to be governor. She's shown her loyalty to the citizens of New York um, through her heart for all of New Yorkers, no matter where they live. She certainly, through her career in public service, has put, put her hands to larger service, and her health to better living and her commitment to all New Yorkers and their health and well-being, and certainly for her co community and the world through her leadership as a governor here in New York. So um, with that, it is for all these reasons, it's my great honor to present to Governor Kathy Hochul the 4-H Distinguished Alumni Medallion. Could you come up, Governor Hochul? And in, and in one other first for Governor Hochul, she is the first sitting governor to receive this alumni medallion. Thank you. I'm deeply honored. I could not have imagined I'd receive this when I was that little 10-year-old at the Erie County Fair talking about banana orange frosted. But uh, uh, it is an honor, and I had a chance to look back through all the honorees through history. And this is a national award. And when I saw uh, distinguished people like Orville Redenbacher also got this award, I thought, this is really the big time here. <laughs> uh, so, so thank you for honoring me. Uh, thank you to the 4-Hers, and uh, you're on a path to leadership because of the skills you're learning uh, right here as a member of this. So thank you, everybody. Let's go, let's go enjoy the four, uh, let's enjoy the fair, and I'm heading right to the food immediately. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.